Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi wrapped up his week-long trip to Africa on Monday. He visited Egypt, Djibouti, Eritrea, Burundi and Zimbabwe. 2020 also marks the 30th consecutive year since 1991 that a Chinese Foreign Minister has visited Africa at the beginning of the year. Now, Over the past two decades, China's trade with Africa has grown 20-fold to reach more than 200 billion US dollars in 2019. And China has become Africa's largest, China has been Africa's largest trading partner for 11 consecutive years. And 44 African countries and the African Union Commission have established cooperation with China under the Belt and Road Initiative. So, why is this annual New Year's trip uh, so important for China's uh, African relationship? I'm joined. I'm pleased to be joined in the studio by Professor Wang Yiwei from Rumi University of China and Hannah Wenjie Ryder, CEO of Development Reimagined, a consultancy company. Welcome to The Point. It's good to have you here. Before we get down to the discussion, let's first hear what the Chinese State Councillor and uh, Foreign Minister said about the reasons why the uh, Chinese uh, Foreign Ministry chose Africa for their uh, first overseas trip for the past 30 years. He said, first of all, this is based on the special feelings of friendship from generation to generation and sharing weal and woe between China and Africa. Second, it is based on the realistic needs of deepening cooperation and common development between China and Africa. Third, it is based on the important mission of strengthening international cooperation and safeguarding common interests between China and Africa. So, 30 years in a row is quite tradition to keep up, right? Hannah, how do you look at it? How important is that trip from yes. the African perspective? Sure, well, it's a great, certainly a great, uh, uh, it helps China to engage with the African continent. It's pretty difficult. Of course, there's 55 African countries uh, to get around, which is not, quite, not very easy. But uh, if you add up, uh, certainly over the last uh, 10 years, that means with this trip, the Chinese leadership has been able to visit over 70 African countries, uh, sorry, make over 70 trips to uh, over, over 30 of the African countries, which means that they're able to get to know the leaders and to engage with them and find out what they really need. Mm. And it means that, of course, the political uh, relationship between China and Africa has certainly uh, been able to improve uh, considerably over the time. 1991 is a start and then 2000 of course the China-Africa Forum and uh, Corporation began right. and it's been continuing and there was a huge meeting uh, in 2018 on that. Uh, so this is, uh, it's, it's definitely helped that relationship build. The question is has it built the economic ties, and that's what I hope hmm. we can. We're going to talk about that. In, yeah, we're, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But still, 30 years—it's quite um, something, right? To maintain. I mean, I don't know whether the, when the leaders started, when the first um, back then, the Chinese foreign minister back then, when he started these trips, did he had it in had his in his mind that he was going to continue or this tradition was going to form? Uh, Professor Wang, exactly what happened? How do you think this 40 years became such a tradition? Well, Africa is a land of opportunities uh, because uh, now there's similar population, 1.3 billion. We're cut by with China very soon. Very young, dynamic. Uh, the working age, 27. China is 47 now. India, 37. So the many labor-intensive industrial, no soap, hope in China. Uh, it's a huge space, for instance, in Nigeria. But 30 years ago, did the Chinese minister, a foreign minister back then, had that vision that he was going to set foot, that China is going to stay in Africa and continue to make their presence? Of course, uh, uh, firstly, political uh, foundations you know, support each other, you know, anti colonialism uh, movement and independence, and, uh, and Africans help China resume the United Nations uh, uh, seat. And also, we appreciate that. China also helped uh, Africa a lot in uh, Tanzania, Zambia, uh, the railway, and uh, also. Uh, future, uh, because of the uh, uh, American first and also Brexit, Africans and many countries still rely on the foreign, foreign aid. So now cut, not just from UK, also from Afri uh, uh, European Union twice. So now they suffered a lot uh, of the uh, recessions of the global economy. So China definitely is a be the hope. Uh, be what in the past 40 years, China's uh, modernization, you know, 
uh, this experience we can share with the African countries. Mm. Forty years ago, our per capita GDP is only one third, even less, of a South Saf uh, Sahara Africans average. But now China, given uh, the poverty, all this experience we can share, and China's uh, industrialization experience very right. fresh. Of course, of course. But I think it's, qu it's quite a foresight right back then for China uh, to, to think about the importance of Africa and really deepen its engagement uh, 30 years. And it's also been um, almost exactly the time that China um, deepened its reform and opened up to the outside world. Uh, let's talk about this trip, though. Um, five countries, as I mentioned, Egypt, Djibouti, Eritrea, Burundi, and Zimbabwe. Why these countries, Wenjie? Well, it's very difficult to tell. We've got very different types of countries and also in term, both in terms of uh, their economic situation, their poverty situation, you know, uh, Egypt being one of the largest economies on the continent and then, you know, Eritrea and Burundi, some of the smallest, uh, even smallest populations. Mm. So really he's, uh, Wang Yi has, the Foreign Minister Wang Yi has gone to, uh, his, it's very unclear exactly how these countries have been picked and I think probably uh, one could do an exercise of you know, what exactly is, is coming All up. Right. We know that uh, Eritrea, for example, hasn't yet signed the Belt and Road Initiative, so mm. that might be something that's on the agenda All to right. discuss. Professor uh, Wang, could you shed light you on no the, choice of okay. these, the choice of these countries? It must not have been a random choice. Of course. Or was it? <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Wang, you visited uh, many other African countries uh, in the past uh, you know, years. So this Five countries actually particularly uh, want to highlight some of the corporations on the projects like uh, uh, like uh, Djibouti, their free uh, trade uh, economic zone, I think mm -hmm. uh, quite successful, and also the railway connected to the Estopia and uh, uh, now uh, the Ethiopia, you mean? Yes, they built the, the rail uh, connected yeah. each other, and also stop in your country, you know, Kenya, yes, it has, uh, for uh, to visit the yes. uh, the stand uh, uh, the rail. That's and right. now wants to extend to maybe in the future, I think, uh, to Burundi. Mm -hmm. Now I think. Uh, yeah, but is, uh, is like that why he visited these countries, Djibouti or Burundi? But they talk about the, uh, the future cooperation, definitely. Of course, some uh, uh, countries that are the uh, routine presidency with the China African uh, Forum, uh, you know, they the, the want to achieve, make the, uh, the forum's achievements be uh, carried out of that. Also, uh, political relations, I think. All right, let's, let's take a look at uh, what uh, one of our uh, friends on Twitter had for us uh, when I forecast this uh, discussion. Uh, we sent out a tweet and he replied, he said, uh, by the way, by this Twitter user called uh, Pan SP, he said the West has abandoned Africa. Uh, Wenjie, what's your reaction? Do you think it is true? Uh, I don't think so, actually. I think more and more countries are realizing that Africa is a very, very important continent to engage with um, and thinking about how to do that in as successful a way as China has so far. Um, w next week is going to be the UK Africa Summit, mm -hmm. uh, investment summit uh, held in London. We'll see several African uh, presidents and leaders go over there. Uh, Malta just announced a new Africa strategy. So we, a country as small as Malta, um, so we are seeing a number of countries thinking we really do need to re-engage in a sense with, with African countries and especially because of these points that uh, Professor Wang mentioned around the dynamic uh, youth population engaging with uh, a continent which does have the largest numbers of poor people now in the mm. world. So if we're going to be driving poverty reduction, we're going to be driving sustainable development, Africa is the first place to begin. Oh, well, tell us a little bit the on-the-ground stories, for instance, over the last year. China, uh, of course, has been um, pushing forward its partnership with African counterparts. What are some of the real um, everyday stories and people that you have heard or met that you want to share, us, share with us here to highlight the kind of growing ties, maybe growing pains as well in this relationship? Professor Wang. In the past six years, because of BRI, I visited 16 times of Africa, you know, more than 11 uh, African countries. I found that the three major Chinese brands are now very popular, uh, Tanika, Cell Phone, the Huawei, and also uh, Star Times, you know, <laughs> the many movies, dramas from China. So Afri uh, African youth, particularly you mentioned about, they're very excited about China, what happened in China. They want to uh, visit China and uh, travel and even uh, uh, start in China. 
and also many Chinese uh, tourists now more and more, more than one million Chinese works here, more than uh, 10,000 Chinese uh, companies uh, in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. So Africa definitely uh, will be the future destination of uh, Chinese tourists and mm -hmm. also now there are lots of the investment. Uh, I think uh, when I visited uh, Nigeria, for, in for instance, recently, Nigeria the 60 years ago, they told me uh, they began the industrialization process. But today, the industrialization is the same as the 60 years ago, less than 10%. But China, the most successful story of the industrialization. Right. So I want to share the China experience uh, of that. Okay. And then I also visit... Um, you, yeah, let, before you move on, on when, I want to hear, I wanna hear the goal, African... So a big yeah, I want to hear the African side of the story. Uh, how are Africans feeling about... Uh, uh, Chinese enga engaging with the Chinese, I understand in terms of uh, uh, the pe number of people learning Chinese, for instance, there's a huge interest, right? There's yeah, a lot of, uh, sure. a great increase of the number of people learning Chinese. So over the past year, what are some of, what is the most uh, interesting experience that you had? Look, I think um, it's not possible to give an overall African view, of first of all. Um, and in different countries as well, they have very different relationships with China. So uh, I visited uh, Rwanda, South Africa, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya last year and for different projects. And uh, in Kenya, for example, citizens are really interested in China in the sense of they want to trade more with China and we've had a number of interesting agreements last year for example to be exporting avocados to China but now is the year to make that real the agreement happened mm -hmm. last year they want to see the results this year and really kind of push that mm -hmm. um, and then similarly uh, with a uh, country like Rwanda China's engaged on numbers of infrastructure projects. As you know, you, you walk around the roads in Rwanda; they're all constructed by by, by Chinese uh, by Chinese companies. Yeah. Uh, and people know that, but they're also looking for even more from China, not just the products. They also want to be. When, when I say to them that those techno phones are actually manufactured, it's a Chinese company, but they're manufactured in Ethiopia. My Kenyan. Uh, family are extremely surprised by that. Now the uh, slogan said, made in Africa with China. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, but there is this impression that everything is made in China and this is something which I hope uh, China will start to find a way to work with leaders to change and change the, hmm. of course China is Africa's biggest trade partner, sure. but the majority of that is trade coming into uh, African countries. Well, so China has been holding these uh, import expo and a yes. lot of African companies have been very active actually Absolutely. personally. We I, were too. <laughs> yeah, personally I, yeah. I met many African friends and they were very excited about it. So I hope the momentum can be kept exactly. and that people can really see the difference in their earnings, in their employment situation, in the, in the local economic development in Africa because of these exchanges. Yes. Okay, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Professor Wang Yiwei from the Remy University of China and Hana Wenjie Ryder, CEO of Development Reimagined.